presence of God and pushes back the darkness. So that's what we're looking at, the first lesson, pushing back the darkness. Just like the picture here when the children of Israel were all in order, camped around the tabernacle. They were all around the altar with proper worship unto God and the fire from heaven came down and the light of God's presence pushed back the darkness. Amen. So it's a picture for us as well that we need to rebuild the altar of the Lord, which is our hut. And as we usher in his presence on a personal level, it will push away personal darkness. On a corporate level, it will push away corporate darkness. So what is darkness? If you look, this is the theme, especially in the New Testament. It's a theme that is picked up by Jesus, by the Apostle Paul in the writings, that when we become Christians, we come to the light. Jesus is that light. And that light pushes back the darkness. But what is this darkness? In uh, John Melinde's book, Prayer Altars, he says, darkness is the spiritual force that comes when people reject the will of God. It gives legal authority to the devil to influence our lives negatively. So darkness is something that comes through disobedience, through rejecting the will of God, and it allows the devil to have authority in our lives. There are three basic types of darkness, and these actually are alluded to in the prophecy that Isaiah gives. Remember Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 to 2, talking about the coming of the Messiah, and the Messiah is the light comes into the world and our response is let's read this together arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you amen where does the Lord arise over us It's at the prayer altar that his fire comes the light of God comes and here it very clearly shows that there's a darkness that covers the earth and a deep darkness over the people. Okay, imagine this is you or anybody. Without the light, without Jesus in our hearts, this is what we are like. There's deep darkness in the hearts of man. And this is personal darkness. Now, this darkness can even be in Christians. If you look at the smaller epistles of John, John talks a lot about this, where he says that if we say that we love others, but there's hatred in our heart, we actually are in darkness. He's talking to Christians. So we can have levels of darkness, even as Christians, in our own life. What, are, what is personal darkness? Personal darkness is layers of darkness due to personal disobedience to God's word, his ways, and his will. It leads to the unfruitful works of darkness that Ephesians 5, 11 talk about. Okay, so the sins, the areas that we need to be consecrated from and to repent of, these are levels of darkness, personal darkness in our life. Now, where do these come from? It actually comes from a covering of darkness or what is called societal darkness. Societal darkness are the values and the ways in a society that are contrary to the Bible. And in Scripture, these are called strongholds of the mind. 2 Corinthians 10 and verses 4 to 5. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to what? The pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is, filled, is fulfilled. So this talks about strongholds of disobedience in the minds of people, which comes from philosophies of society. And so every society has different kinds of philosophies. In the West, you see a predominance of the secular humanistic thinking. Over Singapore, what could be some of the main philosophies or ways of life that affects people, even Christians? Kasiu, Kasi, Kabo, fear, 
in our life that motivates what we do rather than the fear of God. It comes from the fear of man that comes from a societal darkness that is over the people. Okay, so this can cause deep darkness in us if we don't deal with it. And then, of course, above societal darkness, what is it that is causing this covering of darkness over a whole society, a whole area? Territorial spirits, what the Bible calls in Ephesians 6, 12, powers of darkness. Territorial darkness is powers of darkness ruling over a territory due to the disobedience of the people. If people disobey, then the devil has authority to send his legions, to send his powers and principalities and powers of darkness over areas to control. So this seeps all the way down into us, into people. Okay, so those are the three levels of darkness. Personal darkness, societal darkness, territorial darkness. Of course, ultimately, as we want to see revival come into the land, then societal darkness has to be pushed away, which means pushing away of the, the spiritual powers behind it. But that can't be done if we ourselves have deep darkness in us, right? So personal prayer altars help us to push away personal darkness in our life. There's a balance of power. Whichever altar is the strongest determines the spiritual atmosphere. So even within ourselves, we can have dual altars. We can have a holy altar and an unholy altar. In uh, James, it talks about the double-minded man who is unstable in all of his ways. It talks about us, we need to have an undivided heart to fear his name. So it's possible for us to have a divided heart, even as a Christian, which means there's levels of altars that are wrong. Altars are related to idol worship. And we can have idols in the heart. We can have sins that we are still clinging on to that cause darkness to come into us. So in our own life, which balance is stronger? The carnal Christian will have more of the dark altars in their hearts. The spiritual Christian has more of the light altars in their heart. And even over a land, you see this principle at work as well. In a land, which, which altars are the strongest? So here is you, deep darkness in your heart, but then you start to rise up to build an altar. So your head is still in this darkness that's covering the land. Your thinking is contrary to the word of God in many ways. You're living just like the world. But when you start to build an altar, what happens? Fire of God comes. Do you see what happened there? Fire comes. The light of God comes into your heart. What happens? The cloud of darkness lifts off of your head. It's still on the top of your head, so there's still some high places that are there that need to be dealt with, and that's, that's a process that's being dealt with through your whole life. And also, you saw what happened. The devil will flee away. Okay, So when you build a prayer altar, the fire of God comes, the darkness will lift, and the devil will flee away. But still, that darkness is there. So what needs to happen is we need to come corporately together. There needs to be enough people coming to build altars in, the, in their heart and to allow the fire of God to come. And then what will happen? Enough in the land will push away the darkness. Amen.